two months ago, I switched from Unity to Godel. There's been some growing pains, but overall, I'm really enjoying the engine, and today, I'm going to be trying to do a one-day game jam. Let's see how it goes. Currently, I'm trying to decide what sort of project I want to do. I thought about it a little bit last night, but I didn't want to cheat so much. I was like pulling out a journal. I think I'm like, hey, think about this. I'll go to sleep. Hopefully, I'll get some ideas in my subconscious or something. Instead, I had a never-ending nightmare that lasted like four hours. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, Bracken pretty much kept killing me. We got Bracken went to go skinwalk. Terrible. Terrible dream. Anyway, that didn't work. So now I'm coming up with an idea. I tried making a couple projects over the past week or two. But a problem I continuously have is overscoping, so I want to try to address that by making something really, really simple, ideally, uh, since I have one day to do this, and it's already like half, it's 3.14 p.m. currently. Like, I, I'm, I meant to do this at like 10 in the morning, uh, but then it said, terrible dream, ended up getting more sleep, I don't know why I did that. Anyway, we're doing this, got a scope down, it's going to be great, we're going to get it, got to make it something simple. Alright, I'm thinking we have to make it a 2D project, I prefer 3D, and I'm more experienced in it, actually. But 2D is a good bit simpler, and I'm thinking it's something kind of like side score mini game type. Thing. You play it in a game, like, oh, it's a skill check, do the skill check, that'll be the game, it'll make some way to add score. Something simple. So we'll do 2D, even though must use 2D, because I think that'll just work out better for a super small scope thing. Alright, I'm thinking of making it a 2D type mini game sort of thing where something falls down, and then you have to use your mouse with like a little platform on it to catch the object when you do get a little bit extra score. And I probably went with my nice scores, but that's okay. But pretty much, boom, thing falls down, catch it using your mouse, which is like a little platform around it, and then boom, 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 boom. Get them all, gonna be great, gonna be super cool, dope, poggers, fantastic. Alright, so I made a main scene, which is empty currently, the entire game's gonna go in. Then I made my player scene, which uh, is pretty much our player, the little mouse thing, move your mouse, it follows it. Uh, I started by making a little character body, then a little collision shape for it, and then mesh instance. And then I realized, hey, probably get added to actually so we're close to 3D. And I'm not sure to make something follow your mouse. Because I don't, most I rotate the camera to the mouse. So I'm gonna watch a video on that. Alright, I watched the video, it was pretty good actually. I'm kinda confused, but it was short, concise to the point. Good on this dude, Kron, thank you. Uh, I'm confused, but I'll probably figure it out. We're good, we're good. Alright, so I was sort of following the tutorial, but I was thinking about could this use transform? Hey, eh, could, but you know, it's better to use system sometimes. Like, wait, no. I don't even want that. I don't want to move, I don't want to move speed. I want to make it to where, if the mouse is somewhere, I want the X position of the little player buddy. A little platform boy over here to be in the exact same spot. And I realized that I had like a revelation, like a Gojo, oh, hollow purple, like floating in the air. Great, had that revelation. Fantastic. And it's very really simple too. Um, all I do pretty much is I say, hey, get the mouse position, get goal mouse position, um, which you know, you can just do it wherever it wants. And then, hey, grab my mouse position.x and assign it equal to mouse position.x. And then, boom, it just works. Fantastic. It's like three lines of code, including the physics process thing. Like, honestly, I'd probably. You even get rid of the uh, mouse position equals null thing, but maybe, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep it just in case. A little, a little, little loveliness. But I like it, I'm proud of it, we're doing good, making solid progress. I made an enemy by doing pretty much the exact same thing. Just, uh, I switched to an area 2D also for the player, I forgot to mention that. Uh, instead of the uh, character body, because I don't really need it. I just make it an area, and then I'll make it on contact, it does something, like it destroys the object or whatever. Don't matter, don't see, don't even worry about it, you can't. Um, but pretty much got that collision body mesh instance. But I tried to make the circle just look a little bit different, but I noticed it's kind of weird in Godot, at least, from what I'm used to. Because, like, oh yeah, instance 2D, right? Why is it 3D then? <laughs> like, I didn't really notice what I was doing player, because I kind of just dragged it around. But that, that's kind of weird. That's, that's kind of weird. The mesh instance just does that. There's Maybe there's something I'm missing, but it's also weird because like, the radius and the height, if you say, like, let's say I set 1 to like 10, radius to 10. Height to 10. It's shaped out like that. That could just be a geometry thing, honestly. Geometry is math and journals in my forte, which is funny because I'm a computer science major. You know, oh, funny STEM majors and like math. Uh, but just kind of weird, and you can't drag it right either. But overall, hey, good, good, I was great. But I think it would be really cool if you make 2D seem more like 2D and not a 3D sphere. Kind of just acts a little confusing. Alright, so I added the behavior for the enemy AI, the little falling thing. And pretty much it's very simple. It's just, hey, if you exist, on physics process, fall. Uh, pretty simple, like, a couple lines, you'll see it doing it right now on time lapse speed, for like a minute. Um, but the thing is, Godot, Unity, were completely different with that, on how up and down works. I forgot about that, even though I've made a couple projects with gravity already, mainly 3D though. Um, and normally, at least what I'm used to in Unity, and I think the Epic Games one, uh, Unreal Engine, when you go down on the Y axis, that means you go down. Um, but in Godot, or Godot, is it Godot? 
Thanks, Godot. I'm going to say Godot. I'll mix it up. I'll be funny. In Godot, Godot, uh, why moving up on the y-axis makes your thing go down, and moving up makes it go down, which is kind of funny. But apparently, the reason why I had to look it up is like some tradition of doing like Atari and stuff, and just Unity and stuff were kind of the outliers, something like that tradition. I don't know, but as long as you know it, you know it. Alright, I added a quick check that checks if the player's area, because that's the node that holds it all, uh, collides with something that says, hey, what's up with that? Then I check, hey, are you in this thing called a group? And is that group enemy? And if so, print, hey, hit enemy. And then in a minute, I'll probably do it off screen, but I'll add some uh, code that makes it like, destroy and then like, add to a score or something like that once I add the score system. But now it detects the enemy whenever the enemy hits it, so we can do the thing where, oh yeah, you touch the leaf or whatever the heck I am saying the enemy is supposed to be when I added the sprite. You touched it. Boom. Plus score. Good job. Uh, 500 credit score. All right. So I added a basic score system, including like a little uh, UI for it, which is like score. And then I changed that over it. I was starting to add that. I was making a thing called, oh, yeah, add to score. So pretty much player kills an enemy. It adds the score, right? Touch them. Boom. Adds the score. And what that does is it changes the score, keeps track of it for me. So it's in a bunch of weird places. And it updates the text for me. But I was getting an error, and I've never actually uh, converted a integer to a string in Godot yet. It was my first time doing that. Um, so I got a funny little error, and I was like, oh yeah, set the text, set this UI's text to score, and then whatever the number is, score. Uh, but I got an error. I'm like, oh, well, the error, dang, that sucks. Uh, then looked it up. I'm like, oh yeah, so use str to convert. Okay, that makes sense. My bad, my bad. I wasn't sure if they would auto-convert it or not, so but give it a try. Uh, then I used str, and I got the same error. I'm like, oh. This, this ain't looking great, Chief. Not looking great. I did the solution. I checked like seven more posts. Spent 10 minutes looking. Uh, STR, 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 STR. One code string. And then STR, STR, STR. Didn't work. And then for 10 minutes, I said, hey, let's copy and paste it. And I copy and pasted it. And someone's like, oh, yeah, so the error is that uh, you fucked to assign a value. I was telling the script, hey, so uh, assign the uh, UI's text to score 55. And I was like, yeah, 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 that's cool. Gotcha. I gotcha, buddy. Um... One question, what is score 55? There is no score 55. What are you talking about? I was like, no, 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 no. Make it a string. Make it a string. It's like, yeah, string. I got it. What? To where am I putting the string? Yeah, buddy, you got it. So that was the issue. That was pretty funny. Next, I looked into a tutorial to how to spawn an enemy in kind of a randomized area using like a area 2D or 3D type thing. Uh, the tutorial didn't help too much with that. It mainly just talked about how to spawn at a set location, the exact position. But I ended up looking it up and then found something like Godot forms. It was right. I can't remember. But something with forms. And pretty much you can take the shape and then get its extents and then multiply it times like a negative one to one, which is that part I kind of crafted myself. And then it'll be in that area. Since we only need to move on the x-axis, it's pretty simple. Just uh, instantiate the object, store it in a variable, and say, hey, uh, that instantiated object that's in a variable sets position on the x-axis to a RAM number between how far this area goes in the axis. Uh, that times a either negative 1 to 1 or some float in between those two. Um, and then that's just a function just sitting there not being run ever, pretty much. Then I made a timer, and then whenever that timer goes off, it just runs that function and spawns it. Currently it's 1.5 seconds, but I'll probably change it. Maybe if I put music in, which I probably won't, I'll set it like it's BPM or something, or maybe it'll increase it over time or something. I don't know. We'll find out. Next, I started working on an end game function. Pretty much if you hit a certain like rectangle box at the bottom, if you miss your leaf, then it hits there and that ends the game. Uh, and then I realized, wait a minute, things aren't spawning when they should be. They spawn like twice as long or three times as long or sometimes twice in a row and something for six times. Um, and I don't really know what's wrong to be honest fully, uh, but long story short, <laughs> the spawning box for the enemies, it was messed up real bad. I'm not sure if it was originally, or if I tweaked something and it was bad. But I adjusted that, used the view collision tool, which helped me see it. And uh, it seems to be working out properly, and I even started implementing the uh, like end screen for when you lose the game. It's kind of like pause, and then it'll overlay the screen and do all that stuff. It'll be good. It'll be fantastic. Next, I worked on the main menu UI. Pretty much, I have a play again button and an exit button. If I click the play again button, it just reloads the current scene, pretty much resetting it all. Um, and if I press the exit button, it just ends the game for you. So you have to do the manual exit thing. Pretty simple, but it works, eh? All right, this time I'm doing it live. So pretty much what I did is I added a little boy over here. It's invisible currently. Just a little end menu, add a little color to it that we changed it, we rebranded because I realized, hey, I'm playing this game. I'm like, hey, actually here, let's make this go invisible again like it's supposed to be. It looks a lot more like snow than leaves. I mean, granted, it's because I haven't put leaves yet, 
but it's also getting fairly later on. Sure, I, I mean, it is a one-day challenge, and it's already 9 p.m. I'd be willing to cut myself slack, because, you know, I started at, like, 3 p.m., and in my mind, the day doesn't end until you go to sleep. That's just how it works. 24 hours, nonsense. It's when you go to sleep. And then a little nuance sometimes, in case you just don't go to sleep. But, uh, pretty much, looks more like snow. I think I'm just going to stick with that instead. But it's going pretty good. I can go play more. Read its level. I just need to add some background art. I think, I think it's fine for the mouse to be this simple. I can keep the mouse here. I don't get rid of it. I can keep the platform being this simple. Same for snow. And if I fail, boom, exit game. It just closes it for us. And it's called snow catching instead. I think I had a bit more mushroom to add. Okay, we need a background. I'll work on the background for something. Not sure what I'll do yet, but I'll figure it out. All right, I found a pretty easy thing. I just ended up adding a color rectangle to the base UI. And then that might as well leave it cool kind of looking, so I stacked the other one on top of it. I might try missing the particle system that I've never touched before. Just add some little snow background stuff. But I'll try that out. Watch the tutorial on it. If it works, works. We see. All right, so I ended up figuring out how the basic particle effects work, which brings the uh, GPU particle system. And it's going pretty good. I turned up the difficulty to show a friend. Like, oh my god, putting it like 0.45 seconds is really hard. I'll probably put like 0.6 seconds or something, but pretty dope. Cool. I'm going to try add music for it. I have like no experience making music, but I'm going to try it. Do, do a little funny. If it's really bad, I just won't put it in and I'll just uh, pretend this didn't happen. All right, I looked up something that should work for music. Pretty basic. I did it in like 10 minutes, probably. 10, 15 minutes, probably. Uh, it's decent. Should work. I should probably add sound settings now that I've added songs, but I'm not gonna because it's already midnight and I probably should should probably uh, buy it at this point. You know, it's a good setting. Guys, I just found the coolest shit. Okay, so I was trying to make my music loop um, and I was trying different modes. Like, this is forward loop, which is the normal one. Um, but apparently it was called ping pong. I put that on. It is the coolest, like, rewind sound thing here. I, I, I'll cut to it in a second when it's actually doing it. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I might just do that then. Jesus, I'm gonna start with the other ones more. But ping pong is so cool. Oh my goodness. I am so glad I should have messed with things around. I'm trying backwards next, but that'll be was cool. That was awesome. I think I finished up this. I say I finished the challenge, um, which is doing a game in one day. I'm sure, missing a lot of polish and stuff, and I could add a bit more. Like, I should probably add a settings menu for the audio so I can turn up or down the sound on um, the music, even just that, because sound effect in it. Just general sound effects, too, would probably be a good idea. Maybe some other effects or whatever. But I think for me being really new to Godot, this was actually a really good experience. I learned a pretty good bit, messed with particles for the first time, put in some information that I should probably remember before, and I think it'll be more in the future. I think I'm going to try to do more stuff like this in the future, where I do like a one-day game jam or a two-day game jam type of thing, just because it's a lot more kind of bite-sized, manageable, and uh, it's kind of just satisfying. Maybe if I set this out to do today, and now I have something new. It just feels nice, it's cool, I like it. Put a lot of work into it, and I enjoyed it. Um, after here, yeah, I put it in the cards already. I'm going to put the uh, gameplay right after this little segment. And the link to the game, if you want to play it, it'll be free on side. I'll put it in the description. No sign up or anything, you just go play it in your browser, and it'll be good. I hope you have an excellent day, subscribe if you'd like, and have a nice night.